hello hello welcome everybody for the final the final day of our tech series tech means business i'm so excited to share this because we got a tight end in the industry and i can't wait to introduce you to him but first i want to go through a little bit of our announcements get to know a lot a little better and then you know let's get it going so greetings family again I want y'all to take a moment to share this, which on your LinkedIn, your Instagram, your YouTube, your Facebook, wherever you're tuning in from, we truthfully have some good content today. This is probably going to be one of the largest sessions we have. I guarantee it. This month, we're celebrating Financial Literacy Month with some highlights of the greatest black technologists. And we really got one. We really got a doozy of you for today. But before we get into that, we would like to know, are you in school, in boot camp, self-learning? Are you applying for your first role or are you growing and glowing in your career? We want to say wherever you are, you are supported, you are loved. We're here to all make sure that everyone prospers. And guess what? Today we're launching our event hub right here and you can go to bit.ly forward slash MMC dash hub. And we have a lot of events going on. We really want to drive traction. We really want to keep you updated on these major events we have going on. I see you and we're currently in school. Yes, yes, yes. Keep learning. And we have so much events, upcoming events, like this one, for example, we have Make Design Accessible. We have technologists coming, talking about how design for how design is accessible for Accessibility Month. It's going to be a really dope series, and that's for one week. And for the second week, we have Define All Odds, which is our Accessibility Awareness Month series. That's going to be a week long about the different people in different spaces and how they handle accessibility. Remember, everyone has to be included in this. Remote week is going on. That's going on from May 29th through June 4th. If you want to come meet the team, if you want to come socialize, if you want to come just have fun in Southern Florida, here's the registration form right here at bit.ly forward slash MMC dash travel. You'll get to meet my CEO. You'll get to meet a ton of great people. And now one of my favorite things, we have a referral zone. As you know, it's very hard to get these jobs through cold apply. And as us, we really want to take the time to help you all get these jobs. And one way we do that, which is our referral zone, you can get referred to a lot of different companies. You can see the list right here. We have Netflix, Microsoft Atlanta, Zillow, Google, Accenture, Boomi, BD, and tons others. So please, we really want you to take the time out to come fill out the form and go to bit.ly forward slash MMC dash refers. Again, here's just a little, here's just a little note. And so before we get into all this, I want to take time to introduce the team because we have a large growing team. Talk to you about our mentorship program, tell you how to opt into our text reminders, show you some of the stuff on our dope Epsi shop, and finally, our financial literacy month giveaway. So me and the team, we have Chanel Power over here, the CEO and founder. This is Make It Happen herself. She's the reason we're able to put on all these series. We have Javon Cameron, who's our chief operating officer. And she actually has a tech ser a series rather on YouTube where she know, um, knows her journeys within tech. You should really check it out. A lot of good contact. And then you have me, Dominique. I'm the chief strategy and business officer. I love doing the back end. I love making everything flow. But there's more. We also have some additions to the team. We have Sade, our graphic designer who has done a ton of work. You'll see a lot of the things that she puts on her Etsy shop. We have Kiara D, who is our event content curator. She does so much. She actually helps. She actually helps host it, and she'll be joining me for this session right here. And we have Sharika L, who has done an amazing job with the lifestyle content that we have. If you want to be a part of this team, visit bit.ly forward slash MMC dash team and select the volunteer inquiry with me. We'll get it going and get it popping. Now, did I hear free career coach in the comments? Well, even if I didn't, guess what? We're offering you free career coaching. That's right. If you go to our site, and you, which is the mentormecollective.org slash mentorship, you can sign up to be a mentee or a mentor. We actually do have a mentorship program going live very soon, and we want you all to be a part of it. And so if you would like to be a mentee, all you would do is sign up and go to bit.ly forward slash MMC dash mentee. And to be a mentor, bit.ly forward slash dash MMC mentor. How to opt into our tax reminders. You can just tag MMC to 866-901-1914. We're not trying to spam you or anything. We only want to tell you about our events and our giveaways. 
And I want y'all to take a moment to visit our Etsy shop. Shot, they have done an amazing job of just giving us a whole bunch of different designs. I just ordered a couple of things for myself and I can't wait to have them on and wear them. Really dope. And to go to our Etsy shop, you'll go to etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash mentor me collective. But what's the MMC event without a MMC giveaway? Because we always talking about giving back to the community. And so how to do that? Very, very simple. You can attend all our sessions. Bring a friend if you can. Grab your pen and paper and take notes. Connect with us on social media platforms. And finally, you can just complete our quiz. And here's right here. If you want to take a stab at it, this is how we also would like you to get involved. Take your phone right here. You can scan your QR code or you can go to bit.ly forward slash MMC dash TMB and create a, fair, create a selfie and just tag us in it. Again, make sure you're taking notes for the online quiz. Visit our Instagram and tag three friends. And finally, text MMC eight six six to MMC two eight six six nine zero one one nine one four. I'm sorry, y'all. And again, we're not going to spam you. That number is strictly just for our giveaways. Here's some of the filters. You have me, you have my CEO, and you have Taisha, who has been a big part of our community. We would love to see your photos on here as well. So please, please, please opt in and take some photos for us. And here's the last time I'm going to say it again, bit.ly forward slash MMC dash TMB. And here are some of the giveaway prizes. We have Apple Air Tags, a HomePod Mini, a Hydrate Water Bottle, and a Nanoleaf Light Bulb. All very good stuff. All stuff you would love. And it's completely free. Just hop in and you have a chance to win it. But guess what? Once again, y'all didn't come to hear me talk. Y'all came for the Mary event. So before I do that, I want to introduce you to my co-host, Kiara D, my one of my favorite DJs and your DJ's favorite DJ. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited about this one. I am the event content curator for MMC, a uh, business analyst by day, and I'm excited to be here with you all. That's right. Really dope person. Connect with her if you can. She's really into music. And so finally, I want to introduce to you the man of the hour himself, the reason why you are here. Mr. Michael Benz, he works at Meta. How you doing today, Michael? Hello. Oh. Where, where you at? I thought we was in the I thought we were meeting in the Metaverse. You didn't tell me we were meeting on online. Oh, my apologies, see? He That's already giving you the new, I should have my Oculus out there too. That's all good. Right. Next time, we'll definitely do it in the Metaverse. Catch us on uh, Quest 2. So you hear awesome. that both join the metaverse because guess what michael why don't you actually you know what i'm not going to do the honors i want you to do it because this is your session why don't you tell the honors of telling the people who you are and what you do first and foremost i want to thank mmc for welcoming me and bringing me out it's absolutely a pleasure the collective is really about giving back and that's always been my vibe it's always what it's what allowed me to get to where i am so i'm grateful for that i really appreciate it um hi everybody my name is mike Benz. Uh, I am an attorney, so I'm an associate general counsel at Meta, formerly Facebook, and I am the head of global patent portfolio strategy for our family of apps. Y'all know what those apps are. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, WhatsApp, Messenger, and everything that that entails. So I know you're like, well, what does that even mean? So I'm the lawyer that everybody goes to when they've got a new idea before it hits your feed and I decide whether or not we should file a patent on it or not. So I've got a team, a squad, we work together and we support all of the patent process that goes along on Meta's family of apps. That is dope. Really dope. <laughs> so pretty much the patent king right here, here to give y'all all the info for what it's like. I appreciate you, I appreciate you. Well then let me bring up your presentation and let me let you take it away. Sounds good, thank you so much. Hey, everybody, I really want to, again, thank you. Welcome. We're going to talk a little bit about tech law. We're going to begin by talking a little about what I do. And then once we've gotten into what I do, I'm going to broaden it out a little bit uh, to talk more broadly as to what lawyers do at technology companies. So you've already heard about me. My name is Mike Benz. I'm the head of global patent portfolio strategy for our family of apps at Meta. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that momentarily. But I'm a Jamaican immigrant. I was born in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Boop, boop, boop. Hey. No real guns, let's keep it safe. I grew up <laughs> in New York, Yonkers, New York, to be specific. So shout out to Mary J. Blige, The Locks, and of course, my favorite, rest in peace, DMX. Um, I grew up a humble kid in the streets. I was trying to make sure I did my thing, 
properly because being from a Jamaican mother, if I had bad grades, I was going to get beat when I got home. So <laughs> I had to do well in school. West but Indies. I mean, school, I kept my head above the books. You know, that was important to me. Never knew I was going to be a lawyer. And to be, to keep it a buck, I didn't even know lawyers was a thing I could become. Because growing up where I did, ultimately, the only two lawyers you knew were family lawyers who were going to break up your family. And you knew criminal lawyers. And you definitely weren't trying to get in front of them. So I didn't know that there were all these areas of law that one could get into. Um, it wasn't mm. until later on in life that somebody said, you know what, you should be a lawyer. And I was like, nah, I'm, I'm good. But realizing that there's so many different types of law, intellectual property, being a, a tech nerd, always into playing video games and a number of different things that I've really said, okay, let's see what it does. Um, fortunately, I had some mentors who told me about the industry and long story short, went to law school also in New York and ended up working at several law firms. And then over time made partner at those law firms. And from there, one of my clients, Meta, decided, hey, you've been doing a lot of work for us. We'd love for you to come internally to help grow our patent practice. And I said, let's do it. 13 months later, here I am. Oh, wow. It's such you awesome know, journey. Man. Yeah, it's, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. It has been. I've been blessed. I've been really blessed and fortunate. Um, but what I realized along my journey is that I'm not unique. I'm not doing anything that everybody here listening can't also do with the right guidance, persistence, and motivation. And I'm hoping that I can do a little bit of that today and absolutely welcome questions about it. But before we do that, I'll give you a little overview of what I do day to day. So our mission at Meta, you know, give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. It's been two plus years we've been sitting at home with COVID. And to be honest with you, fortunately, thanks to Instagram and WhatsApp and Facebook, we've been able to see our friends and connect, see what they're doing, see what their vibe is like, meet new people, yeah. follow new people. And the reality is that people misunderstand this, our mission of building community and bringing the world closer together isn't just on our apps so shout out to other apps that are bringing people together right with linkedin and TikTok, and mm -hmm. you know all of those opportunities that allow you to really communicate get to know people on a different level is really big and we really appreciate that because ultimately that supports our mission as i mentioned before i support all of our family of our family of apps so facebook app facebook messenger instagram whatsapp workplace which is our internal business communication think of it as like facebook while in the office and then mm -hmm. oculus which is now actually being redubbed uh meta quest that's the headset i had on earlier and all of these things really make up facebook what we now know as meta um part of the things that i work on at meta include all these products that we develop our portal products again communicating allowing you to connect with your family, friends. Um, our Quest 2, it's our VR headset. Many people know that from uh, all the commercials you may have seen recently. A potential bridge to the metaverse, maybe not the only way. And then, of course, we've got our Ray-Ban stories, which we launched last year. Smart glasses, headphones, cameras, allow you to really stay in the moment. So I can live my life, take a quick picture, and post it to Graham, share it with the world. Um, we're trying to think about, again, that overall mission of connecting people. But what I do generally, and this is a quick overview on this slide, is intellectual property. So all the ideas that you can conceive of and think of on the mind is intellectual property. And I didn't know I loved it when I was a little kid because for us, most of us are creating IP or intellectual property all the time. And that includes patents, new inventions and products that you've seen. Uh, copyrights, so ownership, songs, books, artwork. The amount of times that I talk to my young brothers and sisters and they're like, oh no, I got a new song. I wrote a new book. I got a treatment for a script. That's all copyright, you know, something that you created. Trademarks, I also deal with a lot of that, is really logos, you know, even, but it's more than just logos. It denotes the source identifier, you know, where does the origin of this product come from? And it can be tunes. Like we hear that, ba -da, ba -ba -ba. everybody go, oh, snap, I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. I'm loving That's McDonald's, right? But <laughs> we've already seen how Pusha T got beef with McDonald's 
because of that tune that he helped write. Um, mm. We often create the content for the culture and they'll get compensated for that content. So part of that is understanding your intellectual property. I also deal with a lot of trade secrets. We all, I, I'm in I'm in the A, so in Atlanta, we drink Coke. Uh, everything's Coke. There's orange Coke, there's Sprite Coke, but it's all Coke. And that is a trade secret. The original formula for Coke over a hundred years ago is protected. And I co cover that as well. And then lastly, also deal with right of publicity. Um, we all see this image here. We may have remember the hangover too, or maybe I'm dating myself, but that face tattoo that Mike Tyson has was used in the hangover. That's a part of his publicity, his image. But similarly, we all have a right to publicity to some degree. Um, and that multiplies when you become a celebrity. All of this is intellectual property and all of this is part of what I do. But what I mentioned before was patents, inventions, ideas, things that we create, and they're everywhere. You don't really realize it, right? But the very iPhone that you have has dozens and dozens of patents in it. And they're currently new ideas, the way the camera works, the way it zooms, the way it scans your face in order to allow you to open a patent, uh, open the phone. All of those are patents, and that's what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Types of patents, there's a number of different types, and I don't think we realize it, but utility patents are about 90% of what we deal with. It's an idea, it's a concept. The other type, which a lot of our creators don't realize they have, are design patents. So I showed you our Quest 2 headset before. We may have seen it, the very same one here. This has a number of utility patents on the inside. Our lenses, we've got cameras on the outside that allow you to do things like hand tracking. But then we've also got designs too. We don't realize it, but this is a patent for one of my favorite kicks. I'm a big sneakerhead. The Air Jordan 6. Did you know that originally the inventor Tinker Hatfield, you may have heard him, he's a designer for Nike, there's two tongues on the Air Jordan 6 that allow you to pull the shoe on. He got a utility patent on that. So he actually had a patent for a new way of pulling on a pair of kicks. Crazy. But Nike's also got design patents on a number of these kicks as well. And that's two different areas of law to think about that people don't really realize. Elon Musk. The Tesla Model S, this is a design patent. He's helped pen it, realized this is what I'm going to make this car look like, and bam, there comes a patent, right? These are all types of things that we don't really realize that we create and the culture creates, and we don't often get protection surrounding that. So I try to help a lot of folks really visualize and think about what that looks like. And that's really the end of my presentation, but would love to talk more about each of these and actually talk a little bit more about how tech applies to law. Yeah, that was great. Thank you for that overview. I'm sure it gets much more in depth on the day-to-day -day basis. It does. I do have a question about patents. I'm curious if you know if the Apple Air AirPod is patented, the design, because I don't see too many, I don't see anyone mimicking the in like that in ear shape okay that makes that's sense question. that's a great question so i'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna be clear i don't know definitively meaning i couldn't look it up and say like oh here it is but i would mm. apple's really strong with its patents most companies yeah. are. so when you think of your tech companies i'm the responsible party over at meta but i've got a mm -hmm. counterpart at apple there's a counterpart at yeah. Amazon, counterpart at every tech company that you can think about. And I've corresponded with, met with them. Google's got several, we have several. Like I have eight members on my team, 24 on my broader team. I have no doubt that there's dozens of patents covering your ear pods and probably mm -hmm. covering your ear pod pros. Everything from the design, how they work, spatial audio, which if you haven't listened to- Dolby. Spatial, yeah. Oh, well, mm -hmm. Dolby. Dolby, see the word Dolby is interesting. Mm. Dolby is actually a trademark. Really? Okay. Yeah, Dolby. So Dolby is a trademark from the Dolby company that signifies, mm -hmm. oh, if you hear that sound, that's Dolby. There's a reason why when you go into Apple Music, it says spatial audio and not Dolby surround sound. 
Oh, okay. And and and, you know, and that makes sense. And what you may be saying is like, <laughs> what's the difference? So I'm gonna explain it briefly. Dolby came up with surround sound, and there's everything mm -hmm. from, you know, two speakers in stereo, left and right, right? Right. And if you're ever looking at a setup that's like 5.1, that five means five speakers, usually three in the front, one center channel, two side channels, and then two to your side or two in the back. And the point one is usually a subwoofer. So if you hear like mm -hmm. five, two, five point three, it just means two, three subwoofers, etc. Dolby came up with the surround sound, and they've gone yeah. all the way to 11, 11 speakers all the way around you and above you. But then the above you creates a sound that goes up and down. So like if a helicopter was taken off, technically you'd be able to hear it rising the whole way through. And they called that Atmos, which is another trademark. Now, Apple yes. was like, we could pay to license the use of the trademark for Atmos, but they was like, nah, we're going to use spatial audio, which mm. still allowed you to hear the music as if you were sitting with surround sound, right? But they call mm -hmm. it spatial audio. And it's just a, a lot of people create different inventions uh, in tech. And either they're going to license it with some folks or they're not. And they're going to get it. They're going to do it their own way, call it their own thing. But when you see, see Dolby is a strong trademark because you said, oh, it's Dolby. Technically, it's not. <laughs> this is really cool. I didn't know that. I did not. Yeah. This is really cool because I watched Shark Tank. And so I think it's Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary is always talking about licensing and everything like that. So now, like, when you're putting stuff in perspective like that, I see why licensing can be very lucrative because uh, I didn't even know about Adobe. So, yeah, yeah. And licensing is a big part of what we do. Um, so, licensing intellectual property is, the, is another type of law. There are lo I got lawyers on my squad that all they do is license deals. So, when you say, like, well, I'm going to rock a commercial, and someone's like, yo, Imagine this. I'm going to have my person in the movie. When you zoom in, they're going to be rocking the Quest 2 and they're going to be dancing around. Can we do that? And they're like, cool. I'll give you a license, which is a contract that allows mm -hmm. you the opportunity to do that to put it in the movie. But they don't always okay. it. Like if the movie's going to be whack, they're like, no, nah, I'm not giving you a license. Don't use our product. You may <laughs> remember a couple months ago, it was a big thing and shout out to anybody who hasn't seen it. It's a spoiler. I'm so sorry. It's been months. You should have, you know, FYI. When Sex in the <laughs> came back and then mm -hmm. I think Mr. Big died on the Peloton. Peloton was That's like, yo, fine. we didn't license you the right to use the Peloton. Oh, and now wow. you're killing people off on the Peloton and making it seem like if you ride a Peloton, you'll die. Oh, they do them, huh? So it's use of their trademark peloton but as a trademark owner you have a right to enforce the proper use of the trademark you can't if people can't disparage it right they can't discriminate so they're like wait a minute that's a negative use of our trademark now mm -hmm. they need to come out and file suit because there's some laws that allow fair use meaning you can yeah. use it publicly but there's lawyers for that too i'm sure when the owner of Peloton was sitting there watching Sex in the City, or if he wasn't, his phone started blowing up. They were like, yo, they used your trademark. They used your product, patents. And their lawyers had to answer the phone. Now, what's mm -hmm. great, tech lawyers at Peloton are not always IP lawyers like I am. Like, I work on patents and IP. I'm sure they're, they got their privacy lawyers involved. And privacy mm -hmm. lawyers are lawyers that make sure things that are like, protected so i'll give you an example i showed you our ray-ban story smart glasses right mm -hmm. i can take pictures with these because of the cameras on the side of the glasses oh, oh. i can take pictures i can take video and it, what's really cool about it is i can i can have my hands full i can say hey facebook take a picture bam hey facebook take a video now i don't want to be a creeper right so what you want to do is you want to give people notice that you're taking a camera, picture, or a video. There's a light mm -hmm. that comes on when I'm recording. It's called our privacy light. Okay. And so we had to consult with our privacy attorneys to say, hey, we don't want it to be weird when people are rocking these glasses. Because sometimes they're just off. 
right? I'm not using them at all. They're just regular sunglasses. And we got our privacy attorneys involved to figure that out. And that's another thing I wanted to share with you all too. There's so many attorneys. You mm -hmm. remember I met my story thinking that there were only really two types, family lawyers and criminal lawyers. Well, you can go so deep in that generally, like even in criminal law, there's prosecution who's pushing for you to be found guilty. And there's, there's mm -hmm. the people who will help you get off. But even in criminal law, there's white collar criminal lawyers, you know, where you do something like Martha Stewart years ago got busted <laughs> for stock insider okay. trading, right? Yo, so you have the you have the criminal prosecutor for white collar crime, which white collar criminal lawyers do not. You don't want that same lawyer to get you off for murder. They don't understand what the other person is doing. You need the person who understands you for murder. Like yo, shout out to Diddy, and when he was on trial decades ago, he got a criminal yeah. lawyer, Johnny Cochran and O.J. Simpson, criminal OJ. lawyer, but mm. for crimes like com versus white collar crimes and that's just that mm -hmm. area family lawyers we've got divorce we've got child custody we've got domestic disputes and the same thing is in tech too so we have lawyers who are employment lawyers mm -hmm. we've got to cover all the people that work at the tech company we've got ip lawyers like myself which is patents trademarks licensing m a and then we've also got everything from privacy lawyers like i talked about before we've got deal lawyers who just focus on getting negotiations for deals and on and on and on like there's so many different areas of law if you like something you don't know you can explore it and there's probably a lawyer for it i showed you a pair of jays i know there's a lawyer that leads a team and i've met her she's dope who's responsible for all the designs of the nikes and the jays that come out that's your job. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a similar attorney over at Louis. When there's a new pair of Louis that, that's coming out, her job is responsible to make sure that their patents filed that cover it. But there's also another attorney who's likely, or a group of attorneys, who license out Louis partnerships. Louis has a release with, with uh, the NBA, and they drop a dope collection. Well, the licensing lawyers for Louis are meeting with the licensing lawyers for the NBA and coming together to decide whether they can come up with an agreement that makes sense. They also involve the IP lawyers. They also involve the deal lawyers. They probably got to talk to the tax lawyers to figure out whether the money is going to be right. All of that. So I see there's a question. Uh, is patent law practice or argued in civil court? If so, is it argued? Is it argued in civil court? Great question. The answer is yes. So well, there's civil civil court and then there's criminal court. Most most cases that are not straight criminal or family will go to civil court. So patent infringement occurs when you filed and been granted by the government a patent that covers your invention. That would include your design patent, which is the design. If somebody believes that you can sue them in federal patent in federal court so mm -hmm. patents are a federal right so there's state rights and there's federal rights patents are a federal right same thing for most trademarks and copyrights so you would sue them in federal civil court for infringement which means the difference between criminal court and federal court i mean civil court you don't go to jail for civil court yeah right criminal court you can go you can be you can go to jail so have you ever had any like international cases and if so like how is that settled is it still like on a federal level even if it though it's international that's a great question so all jurisdictions have different different uh courts so if there's mm. so let's say you own a patent in the united states if you only own it in the united states you can only sue somebody in the united states most mm -hmm. big companies though have patents in multiple jurisdictions, typically where they sell their product. So you've got to okay. file someone suing you, they can, and or you're suing someone, you have multiple patents, you can sue them in the United States. If you have a patent, you can sue them in Europe, if you have a patent, and on and on and on. Germany, Brazil, India, South America, wherever you have a patent, you have the right 
to bring a patent infringement claim in that jurisdiction if it's being uh, hired. The reality is that's going to cost a lot of money. So you might just file one or two litigations to stop them. Wherever they're making the most damage to you, you'll likely mm -hmm. want to file the lawsuits in those countries. Yeah, so I know that there's so much still undefined in the metaverse, in the world of tech law. So when we hear about a case going to court for Facebook or something it's like automatic in my brain that i know it's about to be settled like <laughs> like how how has have you navigated any cases with like things that are not defined yet just being in tech so yes absolutely all the time and mm -hmm. you're you know most most the reality is is that laws exist right and those laws, you typically will say, oh, you broke the law, meaning you broke, you, you infringed upon my patent. It's easy to say like, but you've got to prove it, right? It's it's usually, you know, they said versus they said. Um, the law is no different, but when you start thinking about the metaverse, as you mentioned before, and you start to say, oh, somebody stole my NFT. Well, <laughs> NFTs didn't exist. Mm -hmm. five to ten years ago right they weren't mainstream so how do you prove to a judge which for better or worse is usually an older person who probably isn't in the nfts that mm -hmm. this person stole your nft well it's your lawyer's job to explain how nfts relate to the existing laws that we have now so there's a case that was recently that's ongoing right now where nike has sued stock x StockX is a company that <laughs> allows you to trade, well, not really trade, buy and resell kits, right? Mm -hmm. StockX launched a collection of NFTs that included the Nike Air Mag, um, which is the Marty McFly's or the Back to the Future shoes, the self-lacing shoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the NFT had the Mag, the Air Mag, which is made by Nike, designed by Nike, Tinker Hatfield, in fact, the same person I showed you the patent of the Air Jordan 6s, same person. Nike was like, you can't use my Air Mag in your NFT drop. So then they <laughs> sued them, and they sued them not under breach of NFT law because no such law exists. You have to use existing law. So they said, okay, you infringed our trademark. Remember I told you before, they're called the Nike Air Mag, which mm. when you see them, you're like, Nike makes them. And the test for whether you infringe somebody's in trademark is confusion. If you see that NFT, Nike's arguing, you would think Nike dropped the NFT. Mm. Now, maybe your answer, okay. I wouldn't necessarily think that, you know, you can go on the blockchain and authenticate who, where it comes from, which is true. But Nike's like, the, the, the consumer's confused. They're going to buy that NFT because they see the mags on it, which is our trademark. Yeah. You violated our trademark. So that's on the connotation that is given off. Facts. Wow. So, that's so much good tea. <laughs> you got to convince the judge, though, that, Your Honor, I know it's not paid for trademark law. Like, like you're not seeing a McDonald's golden arches and then the golden arcs, like, coming to America. But it's an NFT. And let me explain what an NFT is. And this is what, and then that's why you should apply the law this way. And then the judge has mm. to make it. Now you raised a really interesting point, Kiara, which is a lot of lawsuits do settle. Why? Because okay. they're, they're expensive. And yeah. then also the other piece, the little thing that they really tell you, you want it to settle because you don't want a bad law on the books that prevents you mm. from doing it in the future. Mm. Gotcha. So, so they rather yeah. just come out of pocket than yeah. right, have cool. to deal with infringements in the future. Gotcha. Yeah. So for someone who hasn't gone to law school, thinking about pivoting into tech law, is there a way that they can get into the realm without a JD? Um, and if so, how in what capacity would they serve? Yeah, great question. So there's there's um, paralegals. Para, I have mm -hmm. my, my team is strong. I got four paralegals on my team. Um, and that's a certificate. And I 
keep it a buck. I can't go, I can't move without them. They help me understand everything that I'm doing. And I advise that paralegal is a great way to get into the legal industry. They can make six figures with a certificate without ever going to law school. And if they love it, which I've seen happen, wow. go back to law school. Another area, if you've got a tech background, like STEM, mm -hmm. or like, let me pause for a second. Paralegals come in all shapes and sizes. They handle all areas of law. And it's really about getting on with the right company that will teach you the skills in the area that you like. And sometimes you've got to navigate through like working at a law firm or working for a lawyer that'll get you to where you need to be. But paralegals come in all shapes and sizes and support every area of law, including tech law. If you've got okay. a step background, so you've got a science background or engineering background, you went to engineering school, you may be an engineer. You can get into tech law there as well as a patent agent. So the same way I help my clients mm -hmm. draft patents, you can take and pass the patent bar, which is a test that you can take without ever going to law school and become certified as a patent agent to help people draft inventions for the patent office. Um, wow, that's dope. I've never heard of it. Like, yeah, yeah a lot. most people haven't. And in fact, I thanks didn't for sharing that. Yeah, because most people, like you said, only know the two types of lawyers. So just hearing that law exists in so many different realms and everything, it's right. just, you know, you can go whatever path you want to go, you can go. And actually, a member of the team asked this question. What yeah. kind of conferences exist to meet these kinds of lawyers and learn more? That's a great question. The reality is, is we in the same rooms y'all are in. Kanye said it best. You're going to see lawyers and people in Jordans. Most people think of lawyers as wearing a suit. I'm not, I don't wear a suit anymore. Most tech mm -hmm. lawyers don't. And you're in-house is what they call it. In-house, meaning you're, you work for a client, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was in a partner at a law firm, mm -hmm. I worked for multiple clients. Now at Meta, I work for a single client, which is Meta. Um, I go to Afrotech. I go to a lot of the main conferences that a lot of people, I go to CES, which is a consumer electronics show. Um, all of these is a part of my job to see what's out there, see what's going on. Um, and lawyers tend to apply and are present in a lot of those events. So when you're in the room of things that are tech related, there's probably a couple lawyers in the room. And I tell people all the time, you never know who you're shaking hands with, but connect with folks, get to know people. Um, if you're purposefully like, okay, I need to meet a lawyer, then you want to go to legal specific events. So mm -hmm. all of these are in, again, subject matter specific. So I go to the annual trademark conference. It's called Inter, okay. International Trademark Association. That one's popping up in DC in a couple of weeks. I also show up at AIPLA, which is the American Intellectual Property Association. I still, every state in the United States has a bar association. And the bar mm -hmm. association, you can just Google it, the New York bar, California bar, Georgia bar, Chicago bar. There's a website and every website has events and you just look for events typically with the tech lawyers. You can show up. Nobody objects. You, they welcome it, right? Sit in the rooms, network with folks. So that's another way to, to kind of connect with tech lawyers as well. That's awesome. I, since I got in my first accident when I was like 20, I always said, I need to meet lawyers and have one in my corner for everything because <laughs> I don't like not knowing the law. And I'm not sure if I'm about to go to law school, <laughs> but like come on, just come on. somebody who specializes and like they really took their time to devote to this craft, like yeah. definitely appreciate it. So with that being said, what is the rewarding part of taking the, I guess, not immediately gratifying route of becoming a lawyer because you know we have boot camps present day for mm -hmm. like getting in the tech but i think we don't talk enough about um delayed gratification so no that's facts i think what we don't realize is that there's a number of different paths to getting to your goal and mm -hmm. I, I, i'm out here trying to tell people that lawyers aren't the stodgy old person that you think about right like there's mm. so much more um 
nothing was more eye-opening for me when I was coming up when I met an entertainment lawyer. He actually was a lawyer for Diddy. Mm -hmm. He was well, one of Diddy's lawyers. Diddy's got a ton of lawyers. Um, and I met another young lady who's also one of Diddy's lawyers. I'm like, wait a minute. Y'all are y'all all represent Bad Boy and Diddy and like all things going on. They were like, yeah. And I was like, but y'all rocking the latest designer and y'all chilling. We all at the same white party. You sure you're a lawyer? And the answer is yes, right? Like lawyers exist in all those circles. And you didn't realize, but lawyers, like many, are movers and shakers because they're in the room. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, so much goes into those deals getting done. You don't think Weezy signs a new album with Birdman without lawyers present? They got to be ready. <laughs> Hopefully he does now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If Meek Mill wouldn't be tweeting that he wanted a different deal, if he would have had the right lawyer in the room in the first instance. Now, right. Before, we often don't realize our power as people and how we could really manifest that, right? We were finally getting to the point where we're building our own stuff. Shout out to Tyler Perry. Like, people was like, what's this dude doing yes. random stage plays all over the world? But it took him to say, like, you know what? I don't need to sign with a big company to do what they want me to do. I'm going to do my own thing. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to dress this lady, Medea, hello, and do what I need to do. <laughs> Over time, he, he got the money and he got the lawyers, and now he's one of the most successful, you know, film enterprises in the world. Yeah, like, lawyers can be expensive, but talking to just people to have your back, like you said, Kiara, like I always need a lawyer in my pocket. The reality is, is just no one or two lawyers that are willing to answer your text and be like, most lawyers know generally about a lot, and if they mm. don't just run you to somebody else like yo i got a friend who actually does that I'll, I'll explain it to you so you don't need a ton of lawyers you just need enough to, to point you in the right direction so that you can protect yourself and not sign that deal because the bag seems big even though yeah the back, you could have signed a bigger, more lucrative deal i mean always think of uh magic johnson and i'm going mm -hmm. back decades now magic johnson was offered an opportunity when he first was getting a sneaker deal to sign with Nike, this up and coming shoe company that nobody really knew about. And he was like, nah, I'm good. I'm actually gonna sign with Converse, which spoiler, Nike now owns Converse. But anyway, <laughs> when they were getting ready to sign, I think the bag was maybe a $50,000 difference. Nothing crazy, but Nike mm -hmm. was like, we can't give you as much as Converse, but we'll give you ownership equity in Nike, that mm. equity state is worth billions right now. <laughs> billions to be. Oh my God. He missed out on all the bags. <laughs> he missed out. Now, don't get me wrong. Magic sleeps well at night. But mm. you, know, you start thinking, a lawyer would have said, well, he's trying to understand what's happening right now. They're offering you equity in a company that will later likely be successful you don't need the fifty thousand dollars you already got the nba contract right so it's, right. it's about having the right advisor in your corner well hopefully for Diddy, he didn't make his lawyers walk to get him junior's cheesecake you know since... he might have made some of them walk to get him junior's cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> so chanel our ceo asked we saw you share about chips conference can you tell us a bit more about that conference yes 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 so chips is champions in ip but it's focused around helping women come up through the legal profession and supporting their initiative and in doing that. For me, I believe that diversity, equity, inclusion is huge, right? Yes. Um, and that including boosting the number of women underrepresented minorities in the industry. The facts are sad. Even though 50% of law school students are women, when you start to get into the industry and look at people of power, partners at law firms, Shouldn't it be 50% of them being women since 50% of women are entering law school? Nah. There's a number of reasons why women are just negatively impacted throughout the legal profession. And so CHIPS seeks to right that wrong by giving and empowering women to do them and supporting them through that process. So the CHIPS That's event awesome. that I'm participating, it's real simple. I'm going to just help them prepare their pitches. Women need to become mm -hmm. partners because that makes for a better law firm. 
but in order to make partner they need clients so mm. in order to get clients you need to learn how to pitch so that you get practice and then you get feedback that said this is how you do that better and i'm i'm just going to be sharing and joining others and really just sitting down and be like that was good but let's do this and then maybe the next time you'll get that opportunity you'll get that client and then they can build for themselves then make partner and build the kind of wealth that we all need to do and i do the same thing in a number of different areas with other dei groups for underrepresented minorities through the national council on patent practicum page turners make great learners which is focused on reading for elementary school students and on and on and on i'm launching another initiative called the dap that's coming later on this year uh, i can't stop won't stop when it comes to dei that's awesome thank you for everything that you're doing i this is my first time hearing about the chips but i have a niece who's interested in going to law school so i'm definitely going to be sharing all of the above and i know when you introduced yourself you you mentioned that you didn't get interested in law until like later in life so did you like take a non-traditional path you didn't go straight from undergrad to um law school no i did not so i said i was i was jamaican right so for any money mm -hmm. many immigrant families you're gonna be a doctor when you grow up make sure you <laughs> go to become a doctor and you're like all right cool i'm gonna be a doctor so went to undergrad prepared to become a doctor took the MCATs, but I mentioned I was an immigrant. So on top of that, I'm a dreamer by definition. We've all seen it. When I got into medical school, I couldn't pay for it because I wasn't mm -hmm. a citizen. I wasn't even a green card holder at the time. So I couldn't get any, I didn't qualify for student loans. So when you're deciding to go to medical school, that's all I knew. And then I mentioned before the story about meeting Diddy's lawyers and seeing all the all those people in the room because I said lawyers are in rooms you don't realize mm -hmm. I was like lawyers about that life um <laughs> maybe that's something I'm interested in as well and I started to network more with those and I was like maybe I should explore going to law school um and I did and I haven't looked back so I took some time after undergrad I was teaching started my own company tutoring just trying to meet me make, make ends meet and when I met mm -hmm. the lawyer I was like, what was your path? Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. Put my head down. I, I paid for some old law school study books off eBay. That I had to erase the answers on some of them because they was wrong. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And the next thing you know, here I am. So I didn't do anything crazy. I maxed out my $2,000 credit card because you know the ones they give you with the crazy interest rates in the undergrad. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it out taking the test and applying to law school um but it worked um i didn't and give here up. you are yeah here i am are there any other types of law that you practice if so what are they and do you see yourself staying in patent so or, i mean well yeah patent great law. question so i've done every uh, i i showed you the list of intellectual property that i've i've handled so I've done intellectual property for a number of clients um, and including Meta or Facebook at the time back in the day before I joined Meta. And I've done both prosecution, which is helping people obtain patents, helping people obtain trademarks and defending against those as well in litigation. So, I've, you know, I used to do a lot of litigation, standing up in a courtroom, arguing on behalf of clients, making sure, you know, that type of thing as well is something that i've done a number of things in doing um so i would say all intellectual property the things i listed on the page were both acquisition if you will they call it prosecution and litigation okay um uh, should i ask outside of work what do you do in your leisure any personal projects or hobbies i know you mentioned one that you're releasing later yeah no so the answer is yes and absolutely um, I try to stay busy. Uh, I own, I, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart, right? So I love giving back. So I'm, I've, I'm on four different nonprofit boards. Um, I used to be oh. five. I rolled off of a board because of terms. So I mentioned page turners make great learners. That's a you know phenomenal initiative that we've got launching. Um, it's all, it's been out for years. It really helps elementary school kids in Atlanta learn to read 
and tells them the power of reading so that one day they could be the lawyers and doctors and movers and shakers of tomorrow. Um, also, I'm on the board for the Georgia Wildlife Federation to help preserve the wildlife and sustainability of Atlanta and greater Georgia. I mentioned the National Council on Patent Practicum focused on building and boosting the next profession, the next you know lineage of patent attorneys. Um, and then I'm, I'm a member of a local arts community here, try to build up artists in the DEI space. Um, then for profit, I own barber shops up and down uh, the East Coast. So in the DMV, oh, DC Metro Virginia area, Friendly Faces, shout out to Friendly Faces Barber Shops if you know them. That I'm, I'm part ownership there. And in Atlanta, I just opened up my first shop, um, SMS Barber Loft. Um, so that's in on the east on the east side of Midtown Atlanta. So if you're in the A, check out SMS Barber Loft and book it on Squire, yes. which for Squire. those of you, to, yeah, Squire is an app that allows you to book barber shops mm. through the app, and you pay for it, you reserve it. And I shout out Squire because. Squire was founded by one of my boys. His name is Song Laron. And now they're listed by Forbes as being worth over 750 million as a startup. Oh, wow. Two brothers from New York. What Song was a lawyer, walked away from the legal industry and was like, peace, I'm out. And then started this uh this app. It's now evaluated at close to a billion. Um wow. well, you can do that too, right? Um, yeah. No Startup capital is not easy to come by for them to survive. Certainly it's difficult, but he's done it. So that's why I shout out Squire. Um, I'm also currently writing a book and working on a podcast network. Um, so I'll be bringing those to life in the next couple months. Um, the podcast will be called The Game of Law. But as I mentioned before, I'm really into DEI. So it's really mm -hmm. giving the ins and outs of the legal industry from the diverse perspective. So what you mean to tell me There's is you got still... a lot of time on your hand. Also, where, where was this barbershop when I was in Atlanta for school? Like, I needed this. I was struggling. <laughs> it was tough out there. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate that you would have patronized. So, yeah, no, for sure. Um, Can you name drop the uh, DC one? Yeah, Friendly Faces. Okay, friendly. my best friends out there. I'm going to tell them to go. No, not out I appreciate the area of Friendly Faces. I'm dropping it now for y'all. And if you in uh, in the A SMS Barber Law, we're on Howell Mill. Yeah, then you was definitely right by my school because I went to Clark Atlanta University. I could have just went right there, right up Howell Mill, and you'd have been good to go. Yes. So Brooklyn asks, "What's something you love about the culture at Meta?" Uh so first and foremost is I can rock twists and jigs. I mean, I, I couldn't hey. do that. Before. Most lawyers can't do that. Um, and I'm just keeping it a buck. Uh, it's unfortunate, but there's a reason for it. And the, the bottom line is that the older generation expects things to look a certain way, but it's not mm -hmm. just those that are hiring you. It's the clients as well, right? It's one thing if you work for Jay-Z, it's another thing if you work for, you know, it's polarizing, but Donald Trump, if you work for Donald Trump, He's not going to hire the black dude with twists. And for better or worse, there's more older white men in power than they are Jay-Z's. So mm -hmm. most law firms go with the safe approach. Clean cuts, no beards, suits. That's what most people think of as lawyers. But as I mentioned before, lawyers are rocking J's just like you are. We want to, mm -hmm. just can't to court. In fact, court won't, most courts still won't allow you. Like, I went to a court one time, and I was with another partner of mine, and they were like, uh, bruh, you got too many dots and stripes and all that on your jacket. You got to change it. <laughs> or else the judges are going to allow you in. So they're, they're, we're following these protocols for a reason. But Meta, for me, it's really the culture of letting you bring your authentic self to work. Like, they want to hear that I care about DEI, and they let me do it. Matter of fact, they give me money and sponsor me to go and talk and connect with people and build community and start these initiatives. Like I talked about adapt that's going to come out later on this year to boost the number of women and minorities in the legal profession. Like they support it and they're like, do it how you do it. Why? Because diversity of thought allows you to really build for everyone. 
And that's what we, that's what I really appreciate about working at Meta. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Just being able just to step up as yourself, because as you said, so many places still have that old metric of, you know, you can't wear this or you can't be this. So the fact that you're in an environment that really encourages you to be yourself and helps you with that is very, very dope. Shout out to Meta for that. Yeah, I appreciate it. The Amber asks, how can we connect with Mike? This has been extremely informative. We'd love to stay in touch. LinkedIn, Michael Benz. Hit me up on LinkedIn. There you go. It's in the chat. That's follow me. Hit me up. I try to get to my messages. I will respond. It may not be today because I, you know, things I love to do is spend time with my uh, my family. Um, yeah, but I will hit you up because the fact that you humbled me with the taking the time to be here and you humble me with reaching out on a direct message or liking my posts and sharing my stuff is like the least I could do is respond to you. So give me some grace in that it may not be for a week or so, but I will respond. I always do. I believe that's important. Love that ground you down to earth. Um, so for somebody trying to get started in their tech career, um and they want to pursue tech law well, what's one piece of advice that you would give them uh, i would say angle the angle your your decisions your goals towards the goal you want and don't let anybody deviate you from that goal you may start in a job that you don't like but as mm -hmm. long as it plays into your ultimate goal don't feel like that's a problem right yes For example, if you try to just make a couple dollars so you can start your own thing or pay for a law school test or pay to get into law school, don't let anybody tell you that you're not doing your thing because you're flipping burgers. Like, it's a job. If I'm riding Uber, mm -hmm. like, you don't know how many jobs I got, but I, mean, I know lawyers who rock Uber because it's like, it clears their head, it allows them to talk mm -hmm. to people. There's so many different things out here that you can do that secure your hustle. And people like to tell you where you should or should not be. And that's not cool, right? As long as you're focused on your goal and you're taking steps actively towards that goal constantly, you, you'll you succeed. Law is no mm -hmm. different. I talked to a young lady the other day, my age, who just graduated from law school. I love that's that. The judgment. I love the fact that she put it in and she was like, now I'm a lawyer. And guess what? We've stayed down the whole time. We've conversed. She's like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't get in this time. Don't worry about it. Get to it cool mm. oh, i graduated i didn't get the grades i wanted cool get to it i didn't pass the bar the first time not a big deal you wouldn't be the first one get to it passed it the second time now she's working at a startup that startup if they blow big she'll be rich so don't exactly. let anybody think that you can't achieve your goals and as long as you're focusing on working towards it just don't let the don't let the haters like stop you love instagram love TikTok. we often look at what other people are doing and saying oh we should be doing the same thing i can pee i can y'all know i can let y'all peek behind the curtain right it isn't exactly what you think it is they're showing you their best life at that moment you don't mm -hmm. know that they got ten thousand dollars on their credit card to get to where they were for that one shot it's not you know it's not always real so you know make sure you focus on your goal Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Well, does anybody have any final questions? You got Michael here for another minute or two. Ask away. We started a little late, so I want y'all to get one more question if y'all have it. He's Happy a busy man. You. A very busy man. Yeah. Really appreciate you taking the time. I, Thank you for inviting me out. Like I said, I, I like having somebody <laughs> <laughs> who's in-law and at my fingertips and uh just you making yourself available for us that's that's beautiful got appreciate it. I got you Man, so <laughs> so guys make sure that y'all connect with him i'm gonna drop the linkedin one more time before we end the session but please he's like he told you he will respond to you in due time we all need a little grace it's crazy in the world and we're all busy so please reach out to him shout him out even if you just to say thank you for having this session because he did an amazing job he taught me some stuff i didn't even know i didn't even know about the two um tongues wearing the jordan stuff that's crazy and i was wearing jordans for how long now you wear a pair right. of six and realize there's, there's probably four or five patents in that one sneaker alone don't let me get started on all the others lebrons and all that <laughs> <laughs>
So we need to we gotta have you back for a session just on that, so you can tell us all that. We would love to have you back. Say no more. I'll drop it out like a little Rolodex, and you'll be like, "What?" Hey. <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in. Thank you so much for stopping by, and we finished. We started the series strong, and we finished strong. So thank you all. We hope you have an excellent weekend. Appreciate y'all. Thank, thank you. So you. Much. M M C.